Welcome back to Moyul, the cooking channel that's not so useless. In this video, we'll be roasting up a crispy roast pork belly. Honestly, this dish needs no introduction, and all you really need to hear is this. Now that being said, sometimes I feel like everyone focuses too much on that crispy skin and forgets that the meat needs to be tender and juicy too. At least for us. We've tried and tested this method at least 4 times before filming, and I'd say it has worked the best overall. However, there is still room for error, and we'll discuss that later on. So to make this delectable roast pork belly, you'll need pork belly, light soy sauce, cooking wine, white rice vinegar, chicken powder, salt, sugar, white pepper, and 5 spice powder. For the quantities, you'll need to marinate 1 kilogram of pork belly with 1 teaspoon of light soy sauce, 1 teaspoon of cooking wine, a third teaspoon of chicken powder, between a quarter to a half teaspoon of salt, and this will depend on how salty you want it to be, a half teaspoon of sugar, a sprinkle of white pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of 5 spice powder. And then for the skin, you'll need around a half to 1 teaspoon of white rice vinegar, but make note that you don't need to use all of the vinegar, and salt. To make this roast pork belly, you'll need to do three key things. Prep and poke the pork belly, marinate the meat and dry out the skin, and then roast. But before we begin, if you do enjoy this video, do consider subscribing, as it does help the channel out. So to start off, we want to give the pork belly a good clean. Then scrape off any yucky stuff off the skin with a knife. Next, be sure to dry your pork belly really well with some paper towels. And once that's done, it's on to poking the skin. We want the skin to be nice and blistered whilst roasting. And one of the best methods involves pricking the skin. For us, we're going to use this handy pricking tool. But if you don't have this, then make do with some metal skewers and tie them together with a rubber band. Then go crazy and prick the skin. And we were at this for a good 10-15 to 15 minutes. You want to make sure that your poking tool is sharp enough to poke holes in the skin, but you don't want to pierce through the skin. If you pierce through the skin, the oil from the fat will flow up that hole and wet the skin whilst roasting, which is a big no-no. Now don't neglect the edge of the skin either. With one hand, hold the skin back and use a single skewer to prick the edge. After all that poking, you can see all the little holes in the skin, but there were still areas that were lacking. So we continued poking some more. We want the marinade to really penetrate the pork, so cut incisions into the pork belly, about one finger segment deep. Now, we just recently sharpened our knife, so our incision was a tad bit deeper than expected, but that's okay, so long as the skin wasn't exposed. Next, we'll mix together our marinade ingredients. Be sure to keep the pork belly skin side down, and rub the marinade into the pork belly on all 5 sides and in the incisions. Once you've finished marinating the meat, be sure to dry the skin really well with some paper towels. Moisture is the enemy of a crispy skin, so we want to make sure it's as dry as possible whenever possible. To absorb any remaining moisture, we'll be rubbing some salt into the skin. Apply a generous even layer of salt onto the skin, and give the skin a good rub for about 3 minutes. It's fine if you use a lot of salt, the skin won't be that salty regardless, but just be sure to take that excess salt off before roasting. In addition to the salt, 
we're going to rub in a nice layer of vinegar to help dry the skin out even further. It sounds counterintuitive since moisture is bad, but it really does help dry out the skin. After rubbing in the vinegar, we're going to make the pork belly an aluminium foil container to protect the pork from drying out in the fridge. So put your pork belly onto some foil and fold up a nice box. And then we'll be using some toothpicks to pin the sides to the meat. When you're done, check that only the meat is covered. We want to make sure that the skin is exposed, and that includes the sides. Once that's all done, put it in the fridge and let it dry out for two nights. On the day of the roast, take the pork belly out of the fridge, and let it rest in room temperature for about half an hour. Preheat the oven to 150 degrees Celsius, or 302 degrees Fahrenheit and make a few holes in the bottom of the foil to let any blood water leak out. Once your oven is 150 degrees Celsius, put your pork in and let it roast for about 40 minutes. Now, if we rewind a little, you'll notice that we put in a silver ring. And this silver ring will help prop the pork belly up, letting the blood flow up better. But more importantly, this will add curvature to the pork. Again, Moisture is the enemy of a crispy skin, and we don't want any pooling of moisture on the skin. As the pork roasts, it will naturally want to curve upwards, and as such, pooling of moisture is very likely to happen. By introducing this silver ring, the pork will curve downwards, and the moisture will flow off the sides. Now, I forgot to film this as we were doing this, but if you notice that the skin is starting to curve upwards at the corners, use some toothpicks to pin the corners down. After 40 minutes, turn your oven up as high as it can go. For us, it was 250 degrees Celsius or 482 degrees Fahrenheit. And continue roasting for another half an hour. Now this step is very crucial. If you see any moisture on the skin, you'll need to wipe it off with some paper towels. And after a few minutes, you can see that the skin is blistering up nicely. But again, always wipe any moisture off. Once the 30 minutes are up, take your pork belly out and just marvel at how nicely blistered the skin is, as well as how crispy it sounds. And also take note of the pork meat as well. Now that being said, sadly it was not all sunshine and rainbows. A tiny portion of the skin didn't blister up properly, and one of the reasons why it didn't blister is because we didn't have an even distribution of pricking holes. But more importantly, because of how our convection oven is designed, the heat in our oven is not even throughout. So if you really want some crispy pork skin, be sure to check these two things off your list. But believe me when I say this, out of the five times we did this exact method, the result you see now was actually the worst. And of course, anything that can go wrong, will go wrong when filming. We'd also suggest using a more square-shaped piece of pork belly, but we just weren't able to get a hands-on one for this recording. Now moving on, cut the pork using the incisions as guides. And again, just look at how juicy and tender the pork is. Then, just chop away. And with that, your crispy but juicy roast pork belly is done. So guys, that was my family's recipe for roast pork belly. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you ever get the chance to make this at home, be sure to tell us how it goes. And if you want to see any of our future videos, be sure to subscribe. See ya.